Brian. So I begin today in some sense with the more precise version of this course. I, in the first several lectures, I explained some rough ideas of what we want to talk about. And so I will try to remind you of some fundamental things and then give some precise definitions and ideas. Uh, we're dealing with many bullets. saying give you morphism because this thing has a smooth structure. And when I use the word smooth, I mean C infinity. The key being that the that these are these covering is compatible, so the change of coordinates is in fact smooth. I'm just reminding you of the basic notions here. Class, smooth change of coordinates is smooth. Again, when I say smooth, I mean as smooth as we need in the context, but to make a precise C infinity. So that means that if I write it down, the change of coordinates is uh, from in my notation phi alpha inverse phi beta, uh, mapping the intersection. Mapping the deep alpha beta, it's a terrible thing, right? To be beta alpha. <laughs> right? So what you have to figure out, right, is here you have you have u alpha, and here you have u beta, and u alpha and u beta go to some something in the in 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 the plane, different things, uh, and and uh, if you start with the the intersection here and regard it through the alpha coordinate, that's what I mean, u alpha beta, and if you regard this intersection through the beta coordinate, that's what I mean, v beta alpha, right? And then so you have this map going from the alpha coordinatization of, the, uh, of that intersection to here, this should be smooth. So C infinity. Okay, so that's nothing new for all of you. And so we have, C infinity structure and the basic thing that we have from that C infinity structure is to every open set 
And now I will just uh, look at U to be an open set in the manifold. Uh, we have the C infinity function. Said we have the C infinity functions. Now I'm always making propaganda uh, to make sure everybody looks at the algebraic structure. This is a commutative ring with identity. So this is a commutative ring. So what does that mean? It's just it has exactly the algebraic structure of a vector space, except you should think that the scalars, that, well, you can add, excuse me, you can add and multiply. So this, I mean, let me just. So you can add functions and multiply them. This is really boring. So you have uh, uh, f plus g is an addition. It's a billion. So it's a commutative and multiplication is also a billion, and it's associative. And so on. You know, so you check it out. That's what it brings. Commutative ring. So this is a commutative ring. And that's the basic ring for every open set that we discuss. Okay. So when you have such a ring, R, you have the derivations of this ring. Right? And we talked about this last time, the importance of derivations. We call these vector fields in this case, but just the general thing, whatever it is. These are these are mappings. With respect, which we respect the additive structure, uh, but with respect to multiplication, you have the derivation rule. So, if we take a derivation, say, d, d of f g equals d f g plus f g, minus one. So we have such a wonderful thing like this uh, C infinity ring, and we look at the ring of derivations. In the case uh, for R, the C infinity functions here on, on an open set, then the derivations on this ring we know very well are called vector fields on, on U. And there's a good reason why we call this a vector field on U, because they uh, classically look like vectors. And please be watching, we have a number of physics people here. Um, if you ask a physicist what is a, what is a field, <laughs> uh, be very careful to pin the physicist down on what he's talking about, because uh, it's not so clear. There are very, various interpretations. For us, vector field, is, we know what it is, it's a derivation on this ring. So, we know, uh, we know for in local coordinates, so if we have a local chart, a derivation on this ring of vector field on U, if it's a coordinate chart, it can be written as a linear combination with functions as coefficients fi uh, dx dxi. I will use this notation constantly. Okay, so I, you're familiar with well, you are familiar with this notation. I know that, but when I don't say anything, it means we're summing over over this uh, with the index. So if, if if I did something like put some other thing here like alpha, then that then they did, there's no there's no uh, place to sum over here. And so I would really be talking about something alpha, but I, I didn't put it for this. Okay, so in local coordinates, that's what a, a vector field is. Um, this guy in local coordinates will be abbreviated uh, as in this way. Yeah. So um, it's implicit that we should know that the coordinates called x, and this means the derivative with respect to x. <clears throat> now, as you all know, uh, you can evaluate a vector field at a point.
in this place that we're talking about where we have it does well it point acts in in uh, in the manifold or in the open center wherever the vector field is defined and this vector field acts is is uh, a vector field say on n so it's a global derivation or on an open set of which contains this we can evaluate it at a point it really means you can differentiate any function which is defined near that point, and what this is, is you differentiate it and then get an answer. So keep in mind that that means this thing maps, uh, is, it, is maps anything. If you have an open set u and any open set u and any C infinity function near that, I can differentiate it with respect to this vector field. And this means that this, you get a number. So what this derivation rule is, this thing on the product is no longer a function, it's a number. It's the evaluation of the function at x. This is what you do sometimes in calculus, uh, times, times the derivation of g. Uh, let's be very precise. So at x of g. This is really boring, I know. So the derivation of f of f at x times g of x. So you get a number, a real number. So we evaluate the derivation. And so what that says is that a basis for these things for the such uh, derivations at a point. same guys, namely uh, dx, ddx1 at the point, ddxn at the point. Right. So that's a basis, and in particular you see proving uh, all of this, which we have done in some lecture or another, this thing, t at this point, x of n, these are such derivations at this point is an n-dimensional hyperspace. It's not so clear. <clears throat> so that's a review of every, everything, uh, just to set the language. Uh, and now, as you as you know how I think, I always think in a picture, the manifold M is a base space of our discussion. Sometimes I call it the base space of the discussion. And for every x in, in the manifold, you have associated a vector space, namely the tangent space at that point. If you have another point, y, you have another tangent space at that point. And so on. The fundamental picture that makes the difference between beginning calculus and, and advanced calculus, which we're doing here, or mathematical physics, which you're doing, is these vector spaces are all different. These vector spaces are all different. There is no canonical way to say that vector space is uh, canonically identified with that space. There is no canonical way to say that that vector space is, to, is identified with that space. The way to do it is given to you by the physics. The way to do it is given by, by some ex additional structure. So as I said last time, we're dealing with manifolds plus. And the, the plus part is some way to identify tangent spaces so we can differentiate and so on. Some additional structure. Now, this union of spaces is just the, uh, these tangent spaces, the union of these spaces is just joint union. That, that's my picture. I stand, as you all know, I stand with each one's picture. This, all this formal union like this, and I was telling Sandeep, because this has to do with the farmer in, in, in Nepal, 
someplace, is there is at least one section around here, it's called the zero section, that God gave us. In Nepal or Germany or wherever you're thinking, there's, it doesn't matter, there's exactly one zero section, and that's it. There's nothing else canonical. That's it. There's nothing else canonical. Yes. You may take coordinates and you start writing sections, which I'm going to define now what is a section, uh, but, uh, and you, you'll say that's good and you're happy, but it is not canonical, at least at this stage of the discussion. So we need a smooth structure here. On, on this tangent thing. And this tangent, this smooth structure is most easily defined by, by a frame. So if you have, if you have, so defined by a frame. So I have to tell you, remind you what is a frame. Talk to anybody, they'll talk about fit frames, they'll talk about moving frames, and that's what you're really talking about in dimension three. The tangent, what, what's terrible about these tangent spaces in R3, we have the tangent space at a point, and, and um, it, doesn't, it doesn't look tangential <laughs> because we put it in, the, in there, we put it with the fußpunkt here, and that's the tangent space here, and you say, Well, I like this frame here, okay. Good, you like this frame here, and you like this frame here, and the key thing is these frames from here to here are moving smoothly. Okay, so, yeah, the, the way to formulate that, so, uh, defined by a smooth frame, so it's just a uh, basis of vector fields, uh, E1 through En, E, sometimes in text, I make that heavy to indicate this uh, frame for some reason, so the e, j, e, the e uh, i is a vector field on, on u, and e1 of x through e n of x is a basis of tx of m for all x. So in dimension three, you would never just take two vectors, you have to have three vectors. At each point you have three vectors, and these are moving in vector fields. So that's a very intuitive thing, right? Three independent vector fields in R3, for example. On a sphere, you have, you say, well, okay, I'm, I'm completely cool, I have two, I have a vector field here, two vector fields here on this sphere. Over here I have two vector fields on this, I have a whole frame on that thing here. But you will never globally have a frame on S2. S2 does not have a global frame. Okay, you know that that's famous. Everybody learns that in high school. Something about combing your hair, right? Yeah, you never, on a ball, you can never have everywhere two independent vector fields. Okay. That is a statement that the tangent bundle of the sphere is non trivial. Okay. So, so, but but on, on, on some open set, of course you have the, the frame, we've discussed it here every place, so if you have a frame, if you've had a frame, these are, this is a, a basis of this, and, and now it's, this gives you a map, this gives you a map to U cross Rn, which is a vector bundle uh, excuse me, vector space isomorphism on each fiber. projected to x, so it's at a fußpunkt x, v at x has coordinates 
goes to its, its X, its Fußpunkt, and its coordinate. V, a vector, goes to its Fußpunkt and its coordinate. It tells you where it is. That's great, because it, that means this guy here, really, I know where it is. If I know its Fußpunkt, and now I need to know its coordinates. Its coordinates with respect to this frame. So the coordinates with respect to the frame are C equals C1 through Cn, if you like. I think it should be a row vector. And uh, it means that V of x is a linear combination. So C at uh, uh, C1 of V, E1 of X, e, Cn of V, En of X. So that gives you an isomorphism. So that means even though this whole thing is perhaps not trivial, in the neighborhood of X, where I have these, where I have a good frame, this part here is, is by, at least bijectively, and then using the coordinates of the smooth structure here, uh, I, I uh, bring back the smooth structure to here, and we see that it's compatible, and this gives us smooth structure over there. So a vector bundle is a unit of vector spaces, which, which can be framed. That means over some open sets, you have a frame, and you have the smooth mapping to U cross R A. Okay? You okay? We need to, yeah, you're going to, let's, let's, let's think about it. Remarks? Yes. Yes. So is this, so often we said um, in some of the previous lectures that um, a tangent, tangent bundle has a smooth structure that's compatible with the manifold. In particular, it's compatible with the manifold, yes. Yes. That means, what, well, he said, he, I'm going to read, he maybe don't hear his question. He says it, it has a smooth structure which is compatible with the manifold. Mm -hmm. That in particular, the upstairs space is a differentiable manifold. The downstairs space is a differentiable manifold. The projection map is a maximal rank uh, morphism. And locally, by a frame, it has these beautiful coordinates. And these beautiful coordinates respect, respect the, vector bundle the vector space structure of the fibers. Right? I mean, this map is not just some, some coordinate chart. It's a map that takes the vector spaces here, which are just vector spaces somehow or another, but into the usual vector spaces of Rn. So it's a moving basis in this bundle. Is that, is that okay? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so all the CIs that lie in the bookend spaces? Because hmm? all the CIs there, right? They lie in the oh, yes, end. okay, so yes, I, that's very good. So remind me to say that in a minute, okay? He says that, I really underline this business about if you have a basis of a vector space and you take a vector, right, then you express it in coordinates with these coefficients. These coefficients are linear functions on the, on, on the vectors. So they're an ele elements of the cotangent space, of the dual space. So we have vector space and dual space. Okay? Other points? Good. I think we're all uh, fine with that now. So that's the tangent bundle. And <clears throat> it has smooth structure as above. <clears throat> and a vector bundle in general so a vector bundle in general is just <clears throat> is is, and I'll repeat exactly what I just said to you. You, you think of your favorite tangent bundle if you like, but there is a covering of the base. So Upstairs is a differentiable manifold. Downstairs is a differentiable manifold. There's a maximal rank subjective map from upstairs to downstairs. The fibers are all vector spaces. It's not enough. 
is locally driven. I think it's not enough. You should check to see what more you need to prove that it's locally trivial. It's close. Again, smooth upstairs, smooth downstairs, maximal rank subjective map. All fibers are vector space. Yeah. But it's locally trivial. That means you have a frame downstairs. That means for n, n maps into the, into the bundle space, E13, N. Yes. So that the map given by those n maps is a coordinate chart. So it is an isomorphism onto the base cross Rn. Right? And that gives you the smooth variation of, the, of everything. Right? So you, I think you need, need that map. But maybe you get it free. I'm not sure. You understand what I'm saying, getting it free from the, differential, from the differentiable thing going on. It's close. I've forgotten. I, uh, I, must, I thought about this a long time, so a long time ago. But so in general, it's a vector bundle in general smooth. It, it means it means smooth up, smooth upstairs, smooth downstairs. The map the map, map p pi from upstairs to downstairs is smooth maximal rank surjective all fibers EX are vector spaces so there's a vector space structure on each E act. And frame, frame on, frames exist on a covering of the bed. Yes, ma'am. Um, so, what, what's a covering of the base? What do you mean? Open, by? open, uh, open covering. Okay. Oh, I understand. <laughs> you see, that could be, uh, I could have made a, a very mysterious statement there. I could have meant after you do an unramified covering of the base, you have something, something like this. I mean by that, an open co uh, covering of the base by, by open subsets. Right. Okay. So what are you here? Yeah. What are what are E and B again? Yeah. Hmm. What are E and B? I mean, isn't just E and B are differentiable manifolds. Yeah. Pi is a, a, a smooth map of differentiable manifolds. Mm -hmm. Pi has maximal rank. That means that rank at every point okay. is the dimension of. Oh, well, it's in general definition. I just wrote a, a general just definition. Just make it no. In our case, if E is T M and B is M. In the tangent bundle case, yes. yes. But of course, uh, I think just mentioned there's another one right off the top, and she's been talking about it all the time, the cotangent bundle. Yeah. So there are many bundles of interest, and we've met uh, several of them here already. Okay. So, so. So, the first two examples. Is the tangent bundle we, we talked about as, as Mother gets met, just mentioned is a tangent bundle and a cotangent bundle is the dual bundle. So that means that the frame has to, it's going to be each fiber is going to be the dual space of the other fiber. And it means that the, the frame of this thing is going to be the dual frame. Okay? So if you have a frame on the tangent bundle, you need to write down the dual frame. Now everybody here knows that if this is a frame on the tangent bundle, on some open 
coordinate chart, for example. So this is a frame on the tangent bundle, say over over uh, u. Then we have the dual frame of the cook head. Definition of dx. It's in some sense a definition of dx. Leibniz would like this problem. So this means dx i of delta of this thing is delta i of a. It's a dual base. Okay. So people have different notations for that, but uh, I, I, my notation is these are the elements of the tangent bundle, these are the cotangent bundle. Those are the first two examples. And now, the, 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 I've done nothing. This is just manifolds and the basic stuff that exists on manifolds. The key, maybe a key, a key remark is this, that I do not believe uh, was, was serious, and now after even working with physicists, I now realize it's a very serious remark. So I was sitting in a lecture with a, a mathematician who, whose name you know, named John Tate, and he was explaining the importance of K-theory, algebraic K-theory, and I couldn't believe that that's important because it's too abstract and he could never compute anything. But this was about 30 years ago, and now we can compute a lot in K-theory. And there is a morphism here. It's probably this morphism is, you guys will like this, it's called a functor, maybe. So this functor takes a, math, a manifold, maybe, to K of that manifold. And maybe I write here uh, C infinity because it's a delicate point. Uh, the, the, this is an object originally maybe in topology, but then moved into algebra. And of course, I use this in, in smooth or whole morphic catalyst setting. And I mean by this, in this case, when this thing is, this means the space of C infinity vector bundles. On M. Okay. You gotta believe that's an important space. Yes. You gotta believe that's an important space. And you gotta believe that this should somehow tell you all about M if you knew this thing. And then you start asking, well, what's the structure thing? Well, can I add two vector bundles? Yes. Can I multiply two vector bundles? Yes. Etc. 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 These guys even subtract two vector bundles. Just like, and, and when I saw that, I said, you have to be crazy, man. You, you're just subtracting off. What does minus a vector bundle do? Well, it's not, what, okay, inverse vector. I don't know what that means. Yes? But it's a virtual bundle. And you should be happy with subtracting stuff off because you do it with 3 minus 4 is equal to minus 1. You do it all the time. So these guys, Grof and Dick, for example, did this and said, yeah, it's a virtual bundle minus minus a given vector bundle. So this thing has all sorts of algebraic structure. This is very, very important and related to 2M. And I've actually had joint papers with physicists who, where we really use K of, of a certain uh, object. Okay? So don't, don't disregard it just because it looks terribly abstract. It's some sort of thing that takes the setting of manifolds maybe you would say the word category, into the setting of vector bundles. Yeah. And, and you know these children say, oh, vector bundles are so complicated. And you say, it is derived. The set of all manifolds is much more complicated than the set of all vector bundles. Because this thing forgets in principle something, right? It only looks at the vector bundle. It's like saying the cohomology theory, oh, it's so complicated, cohomology theory. A manifold to its cohomology theory is much simpler than the manifold. Right? Okay. So one of the key things that we do with, with uh, 
can, uh, with these guys is we differentiate sections of the vector bundle. I have not explicitly said what a section of a vector bundle is. So, uh, so sec connections differentiate sections of vector bundle. This in the previous lectures, but uh, only roughly, and now I want to be more precise. Okay? And I also want to seek people to bring the connection to the to what you're looking at is crystal symbols and so on. So you can say connections, just also crystal symbol, but you really want to know what these what this, what this really is going on. Okay? Okay? And I strongly believe that it's very important to understand the background algebra of these spaces. Again, I am not a believer in pushing algebra for its own sake, but I'm a strong believer in looking at the algebra, algebraic structures on spaces and using this algebraic structure, understanding what's relevant. Right? If you don't do that, you've forgotten too much. You really should look at the algebra. What is the algebraic structure? Right? For example, on K, what is the algebraic structure? That's interesting. I just told you it's interesting to talk about minus a bundle. Connections differentiate sections of bundle. So what is a section, a space of sections of a bundle? A space a sections, a sections of, uh, of a bundle over a map. So this is the space of sections. I'm sorry, uh, it's, uh, I think it was multi was bad. I, let's, let's be careful. Let's, we always have B for the base and E for the upstairs, okay? This is old notation. I'm old. I use old notation. B is downstairs base. E is upstairs entire space. Okay. <clears throat> of E. Space of section. Well, uh, S is such a, a section, means S is simply a mapping of the base into the total space. Well, there are lots of mappings of uh, uh, the base into the total space. For example, the base is a manifold M here. You could do something really stupid, right? You, <laughs> you could do the most stupid thing. You could take the M and map it all, all to a point, right? Say we map M all at this point here. That would mean that this point here would go to that point. This point here would go to that point. But we don't mean that. We mean that a point goes to a vector in the fiber above it. Yes. Uh, so S goes from B to from M, right? Have I written something? Uh, oh, this is a column was telling me this yesterday. Certain intervals in thinking is, are, are quite good when you're old. They're even better than when you're young. But then they're good, <laughs> particularly in notation. Okay. So you don't want that kind of stuff. You want, you want a point in the base goes to some point in the fiber. And that means it's really a section. But you should never write anything as a set. You should always write it as a map. Okay? So it's a map. From the base to the total space, that's a section of the bundle, such that S maps a point to the fiber above it, and you can easily say that just by if you project it back down to get the identity on the base. Okay, that's clear. That's a section. And we talked about this last time, I think it's completely clear to you. The vector, bump, the vector fields on the base is the space of sections of the tangent bundle of the base.
for example, the differential one forms, on the base, that's the space of sections over the base of the cotangent bundle. To each point, it gives you a cotangent effect. So these spaces of sections are very important. Okay. And again, I scream at you, what? is the structure of the space of session. Yeah. Well, so a, you, sh you start to look. You're sitting in Nord Metal in your, in your room and looking at this beautiful weather and you're listening to some nice music and it's daytime, you haven't yet had a glass of wine. And you want to talk about the structure of this of the space of sections of a vector bundle over a base. And so, you have courage to be stupid. You say, if I take two sections, what can I do? S and S hat. What can I do with two sections? Can I multiply two sections? No! Because that would mean I would multiply them in each fiber, right? <laughs> and I don't know how to multiply vectors. Now, by the way, Grossman himself, who is also a high school teacher, sat in his office in a high school and tried very hard to multiply. And he did not you, you understand yet how to multiply vectors. But of course you can multiply vectors abstractly, but you don't land in the same space. space right? The product of two vectors is in some other space. You have to think of the product of two vectors as a tensor. Right? Some abstract thing. But you, of course, you, if you have a section, what can you do with that? Multiplying is a bad guy. But one thing you can certainly do is you can take linear combinations. Everybody sees that, A and B, in, in the real numbers. All right, I have a section. At each point, it's a, it's a vector. And I just add the two in, at each point. Or a multiple out of the first one times two and the second one times four and add or something. That's a trivial operation, right? Yeah, but the thing is, uh, you would think of that sitting in the metal, and then you should you should have a, a, another cup of coffee and say, you know, I forgot something. I forgot that if you have two sections, that I can add the two of them and multiply by something, but this something can depend on the base point. What do I care if in one fiber I take a linear combination and then I start moving the linear combination? Now, okay, uh, it better be good because these things should be reasonable functions, so they should be smooth functions. Right. At one point you can take a linear combination, at another point a linear combination, but this linear combination must vary smoothly because the sections must vary smoothly. So the big boy and girl, okay, this is okay on this. The big boy and girl word for this is that the space of sections of a vector bundle is a module and maybe I'll call this script M for now because I want to talk about it abstractly, is a module over the ring is a so-called R module, which in this case is just the ring of C infinity functions on the base. Yeah? I think it should be switched, should be... Um, you know you're so quiet and I'm so deaf. So I think what? it should be lambda of E B, not lambda of E. Uh, probably I'm making... Where, where did I... What are you saying? Lambda of B E should be lambda of E B. Lambda? Oh, yes. So the differential forms. Oh yeah, e. that's another thing that happens with A. It's called. It's called the important group of order. 
two. <laughs> right? Oh, that, that, that's fine. The important group of order two yeah, that was, that acts on yeah. everything I do. <laughs> that, that, that was all right. That was perfectly fine. This is okay. No, no, well, but it was okay before you. <laughs> vector, uh, the sections over B of the vector bundle E. That's it. Same mistake. I want to write. I want to write this way. The sections over B, you just have to say it right and then you can write it right. The sections over B of the vector bundle E. Yeah, okay. Did I write it wrong here some other places? I know. I, thank you for catch, catching this. What, what? The vector space of the B is gamma B and then P B, right? So did I write gamma wrong? Where's gamma here? Vector space of the B. The sections over B, yeah, I'll try to say it each time. The section bundle, the sections over B of the tangent bundle B. Yeah, the tangent bundle. Yeah. And then when you write the um, cotangent spaces, then it should be the other way around. No. Sections over B of the cotangent bundle. So first comes the base, the base, and then comes the bundle you're talking about. Yeah? And I probably... No. Should... I mean, everything is inverted here, right? Where, where's another... That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Is something wrong down no. here? Am I good now? That's a bad English. I just hate that. But everybody says, it. are you good? I'm good. Yeah, okay. Everybody's good. Thank you very much. I'm sorry. It's just terrible. Okay. But if you say it right, it's good. Sections over B of the bundle E. Okay. Okay? And the, the sections over B of the bundle E is a module N over the ring R. That means that you have a multiple. This ring is wonderful. It's a community ring. I just talked about it. This, mod, this is this thing here. This, this, this thing is an abelian group. It's all wonderful. But only, much better than that, you have a multiplication operation, which if you have a function and a section, you can have multiply the section by the function. Right? That, has, that means in each fiber, you're multiplying by a number, but this number is varying. It's fundamental that this is allowed. Okay? And should R be C of the idea? The ring is the, the coefficients that you're using to multiply, and this ring is the C infinity functions on the base. Because the base and then the base one on right? Yeah. Yeah. It's what, it's what I talked about here. These coefficients are numbers at each point, but these numbers are varying in a smooth way. So the section is still smooth and it's wonderful. Okay? Okay, for a vector field, you know this. If you have a vector field and a function, f, then f times x is still a vector field. Okay. Now, you will hear about, if you're, you're learning some uh, algebra here at Jacobs, you will certainly hear about modules over rings. And this is the genesis of it. This is where it comes from. These things come from important things like this. Okay. Now, we have the following thing, the derivations of the ring. Okay. What are the derivations of the ring? I told you what the derivation. There's some place on this blackboard. I can't remember what I've done. But the derivation on, on the ring is the derivation that satisfies the Leibniz rule. Some ring, by the way, these can be really completely different kind of rings than you're talking about here. I know some of the interest in algebraic geometry, other places. These can be uh, very rigid things. Okay. So they appear throughout mathematics. These modules over rings. It is a vector space, except the scalars or functions. <laughs> right? 
the scalars you're using to multiply some are not just numbers, they're functions. Right? And so you have to be careful. Okay. You see, if, if, if they were just numbers, these derivations wouldn't do anything. So it's not very interesting. So this is the derivation rule. Okay. And now, so I, given such a derivation, I want to associate to it a first order differential operator of the module. Mapping the module to itself. I'm sorry, I'm being abstract. Absolutely intentionally. Okay? okay. You know how to take derivatives on the ring, and you want to transform this notion of taking derivatives on the ring to the module. Again, isn't that what you would like to do? You know what's going on with taking derivatives of C infinity functions. You would like to know how to take derivatives of sections of the vector bundle. Do I have to say it any more explicitly? Yeah. Uh, what's this one and time? First order linear differential operator. So I'm going to I'm going to say it. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. I'm going to say all of this precisely, but I yeah. It is written down in physics notation in some stupid uh, calculation that I hate that I have to lock myself up in a quiet closet for a week at least to do a calculation. Yeah. I hate it. Yeah. But I want to know what the devil it is. Okay. Again, I know how to take derivatives of functions. I do not know how to take derivatives of sections. That's the whole thing I've talked about here for three lectures. There is no way to take derivatives of sections without additional structure. I've told you. You, okay, my Frederick, five years old, says, well, you just translate over to this fiber, you pull back that thing here, you take the difference, and divide by h, and you get a derivative. Yeah, well, there's no such thing as translate over to that fiber. No such thing, right? So, again, we are interested in starting here with some reasonable derivation of the ring and getting a derivation of the module. Starting with a derivation of functions, getting a derivation of sections of the bundle. Okay. Okay. And this should be an R module motif. So this would be R module motif. Okay. And this thing, I will use classical notation, call it not one. So a nabla takes a derivation on the ring and tells you how it acts on sections. Right? It takes a something on like a vector field and tells you how it acts on sections. Okay. Nabla of x, we write this way. This is uh, another notation for nabla of x. Acts on sections. It acts on M. It acts on M as a first order differential operator. What is a first order differential operator? A first order differential linear differential operator is acts like a vector field. So this guy, these first order differential operators are the form uh, nabla of X of F times a section is f times the uh, nabla x of the section. And now I have to say what x does on the function. Well, I know that x is a vector field. Okay. Okay. You don't like me, Crystal. I'm sorry, I tried to be nice. Yes. So the ring is she likes me, but she's asking all these questions that are very good and making me mad. So, so the ring we're talking about right there is CPP. That's right. Okay. But what I've written here has nothing to do with C infinity. It's just you have a module. So it means the coefficients are not necessarily scalars. Module over a ring. So you can multiply. I use the letter F to remind you maybe it's a function, but maybe we should say use the letter R. In the ring. So what's what's allowed here is r times m, right? 
r times n. Okay. So given the derivation on the ring, I need to know what the derivation on the ring is because I'm going to have to do it here. This is the derivation part on the ring. I need to know what that is. So it's a mapping. Give me, I give you a derivation on, uh, on the ring, like a vector field, and I've got to tell you how it acts as a differential operator on the module. First order. First order means it's, it's uh, just uh, first order vector vector differential. Okay. Okay. That's no confusion. You're not confused. No. Yeah. No confusion. Ring module derivation on the ring transported to differential operator on the module. That makes sense. I mean, you have right vector field. You want to know how it acts on the sections. Okay, the thing is... So S then is a section, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. S is a... S is a section, so how does... So... Um, now does sub X act on S, or is it... So... Uh, or is multiplying that? Okay, let me... Uh, I, I think I've written enough here, but I'm going to write it in other notation, and I think you'll like it. It's, it's, it's really worth doing this, okay? Okay. So... Nabla of delta. I'm going to not call it x anymore. Just the derivation. Professor Penkoff doesn't like vector fields. He likes derivation. He says algebra. So Nabla of delta is something here. So this is a module. So I have to tell you what it does to something if I multiply it by something in the ring and something in the module. Right? What is it? The rule is, it's very simple, you just multiply the element of the ring times whatever this guy is doing on the module element. Plus delta, which is given to you because it's here. Applied to the ring element times the module. Element. Um, okay, so what does nabla delta do on the module element? Whatever it, whatever it wants. It's a mapping. Uh, right, so it's a mapping. Let me emphasize. Yeah, yeah. Let me emphasize. There's a huge space of these of these uh, connections. <laughs> it's a mapping. I mean, it's some mapping. It's your friendly mapping. Your a mapping you hate or whatever. Okay. This thing is called a connection, and we go to this full space script C of all connections of this type. Of course, fixing the ring on the bottom. Yes. Are the differential operators on the module vector space? Oh, yes. That's a very important remark. Uh, did you hear, I'll repeat what you just asked, and I know what's going to happen with, uh, coming up. The space of differential operators, I told you what it is, it just has to behave like this, a differential operator. And it's completely clear if you multiply that by something in the ring, it's still a differential operator, right? So, yes, the space of all these differential operators of first order uh, is also a module. And so, and this is, a, this is an, this is an R module morphism. Yeah. You understand what that means? That means that nabla of F times X is equal to F times nabla of X. Yeah. So basically, the hmm? a connection is um, vector space morphism, which um, has this additional rule. That's right. It's a R module morphism. And, uh, is That's it. Is the space of connections also a vector? We talked about that last time. I'll say it again. No. It's an affine space. So, in order to uh, understand that space, fix a connection, and, and any other connection differs from this by a translation so that you can, you can just think of it as a, an affine space. So, the space of all connections is not so bad. I mean, okay. And by the way, you can see it's a lot better than the space of all metrics. 
Yeah, a metric is a very strange thing, right? But this, this big help of, this is Levy Chibi to this contribution. The space is, these things are very simple things. It's just the definition looks so Okay. Now we have a few minutes. Are we, are we okay on that? I think we're okay on that. So our context in geometry, in differential geometry, our context in, in the smooth setting is, I'm just repeating everything I just said, the ring, it's really a sheaf of rings, so it, but anyway, for any for any open set, but I'll formulate it for the full manifold M. And that's the ring, and the module is the, C, the space of C infinity sections of the vector bundle over the base. And I think almost exclusively at the beginning of physics, the vector bundle is the tangent bundle. Or the cotangent bundle. Or tensor products of this bundle. In our notation, I'll say it again. Is X, which is a vector theme. on this ring is not the nabla of x, the nabla of x times, times the section is just f times the nabla of the section plus x in the vector of the function times. It is an extremely deep concept. It looks trivial to you, I know, but it somehow is extremely deep. Riemann had it in his mind. But it took a long, long time to formalize it correctly. I think Levi Chivita could not have said this. I think uh, it was a long, long time until we could really say it. Okay. Now, notation. Uh, for T and the tangent bundle, or E equal the tangent bundle. Uh, in a frame. So IE, what we're talking about, we're talking about the tangent bundle over a coordinate chart where U has, uh, has a frame, where T of U has a frame. Usual frame of coordinates G1 and Gn. Okay? Okay? If we have a frame, we have a chance of writing this down. This is what we talked about yesterday. I don't want to talk about it again. Okay? In the frame. Okay? Now let's, let's recall what goes on. So what goes on is this. Is a, is a section is the sum of elements F I D I. Right? It's the sum of this in this space. This, this is a local section. This is an element. This is in this frame. This is how you write a section in this frame. Okay, that's good. Now you have a vector field X, uh, a vector field, say on, on uh, wherever this thing is defined. So X a vector field on U. You want to differentiate these things because we're given this connection, F I D I. Well, the rule told you how to do it. It's F I nabla of X, delta I, 
plus nabla x f. Wow, nabla x of f, we know, that's given to us. x of f is di. This, is, this part here is standard. This part here is non-standard. This is, this is given to us. So in physics or somebody who's studying geometry, geometry, this gives it, given. So we need to compute, we need to, get, we need to write that down if we're going to do calculations. We need to do this. Right? We need to do that. Well, x, we have a big break here. x itself is a vector field. So, uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, you're, you're going to hate me for this because I think I'm going to change indices on you and this is going to happen throughout the semester because I am terrible. I think I want to change this i to a j. So be patient. Okay. X, I think, so I'm going to write it x down with i. So x is a vector field. x is a vector field. Uh, uh, C, uh, uh, I, V, uh, I. And you can see I'm in big trouble if I'm differentiating D, I with things in this sum, right? So I, maybe I'm going to change this thing to D, J. Okay. I'm sorry I, I'm doing this to you. This is terrible. You know, you understand what's going on here. I, uh, I think... I think I need to call this DJ. I hope. And now I'm going to write this guy out. This is, and then I'm going to go to her remark. Is she says that's just an R module morphism. So X goes linearly to whatever combination of the axes gets it. It's just linear. So this is R module morphism. So let me just write this here. C I D I D I D I. Aha, I changed it to J. And so this, what this thing is, this is C I. D uh, nabla of di uh, dj. <laughs> right? It's linear, it's linear in this argument here. That is the statement that this is an R module, an R module mapping. It's linear over the vector field. Right? Yes. Yes. Yes, uh, he's, again, I'm not writing the summation here ever, okay? You, you just get used to it. It's, it's not a problem. Okay? Well, therefore, we need to know this guy. This is the key. Because this part is, is, is trivial. We know what that is. It's vector fields on functions. This is just linear in this thing. This is linear over the x. So this CI comes out here, so it's just CI here. So this is the key thing we need to know. So nabla of DI, DJ, is again a vector field, because it's a differential operator on vector fields. What is it? What did I say? You take vector field and apply it to a vector field, it's a differential operator. So it's, uh, you're going to get a vector field. So you're going to get a vector field, which is some linear combination of dk. So it's some linear combination of these things. And some people write that as a Christoffel symbol. So some people write this as a Christoffel symbol. We talked about that yesterday. You're really okay on this now, right? So this this make this this yeah this guy here, this Christoffel symbols tells you completely what what this connection does because everything else just follows by linearity, right? Okay. So this thing is Christoffel symbol. Now. I think one of the psychological breakthroughs in this subject is due to churn. And since that time, we have written this slightly more generally. We have written 
Delta. X of dj, and now here I want to be careful. I think I think I want to follow. I think I want to follow the notation. I think Chern's number is uh, notation of di is omega of excuse me omega ij of x. I may have transposed this matrix, I'm not sure. Okay. Right. So, do you see what's happening here? You apply, you apply something to x, which, which gives you these coefficients here. So, omega uh, is a matrix of one form. And this matrix of one forms is given to you by the Christoffel symbol. Christoffel tells you how to apply the connection to D, either DI or DJ, depending if I make a mistake. Right? And this tells you how it's a matrix of one forms. So this is called a connection matrix. connections to Riemannian metrics, and, and so on. Okay, see you this afternoon.